Welcome to the Mind Expansion Centre. This is a short video on all the formats of art that I've been experimenting with on bracket fungus. So before I actually get to that, um, just a, a quick introduction on what bracket fungus actually is. So uh, it's basically a mushroom that grows on the side of a tree. There's all kinds of species and different shapes and sizes and textures. But that, I've got a few samples in front of me now that I've been using for my art. So uh, this is an artist conch. It's uh, a very big specimen, 21 inches across, 12 inches high. This was four kilogram when it, it was fresh off the tree. It will dry to considerably less than that, um, probably dry to about a kilo, something like that. Uh, I've never actually used this type before. But uh, this is the, the surface I will be using. This is the, the spore surface. A bracket fungus sits on the tree like that. Hard shell on top. So when it gets rained on, it doesn't actually soak into the mushroom and rot it. Bird shit on it, it bounces off. It's like a protective layer. This layer underneath is the spore layer. The, the spores will actually come out the bottom in its uh, due season. And the wind blows them away. And they affect other trees and... That's that, that's its cycle. So this is the the surface I'm going to be using for me for me art. Use it as a canvas. I'm going to paint something on it. I haven't decided what yet. But all that's in hand. So uh, this one, this is a Foams fermentarius. It's uh, got a few nicknames. Tinder bracket is one. Horse hoof fungus. It's got a handful of others. Tinder bracket because it's been used as tinder. Um, right back to prehistory, there's evidence to su suggest it's been used to transport embers from camp to camp right back in the day, going back to the Stone Age. Um, if, if I lit that, if I put a flame up to it, it would smoulder and it wouldn't go out. You could blow it and it would glow like the end of a fag. And that would probably stay in, one that size. That's a small one, by the way. One that size would probably stay in for about two hours. So, yeah, it were a handy way for Stone Age man, Neolithic man, to uh, transport the flame from camp to camp. Saves them getting those sticks out, doesn't it? Rubbing it and the flint job. Makes it easy. Sure, they had plenty more uses for it as well. So, that's that. Always grow on silver birch trees around this area, Nottinghamshire, England. Um, they grow all over the Northern Hemisphere. But round where I are now, Silver birch all the time. This one, this is a Piptoporus betulinus. That's quite a large one, quite a large specimen for where it is. Um, I've dried them out. These always grow on silver birch trees as well. And another name for it is razor strop fungus. Up until quite recently, really, from what I gather, uh, like beginning at 1900s, um, barbers used to use them for sharpening the blades on. It's like it's got a funny texture. Can, can you hear that? Let's try it. It's a bit like polystyrene, but it's very hard. I mean, I, I can't even stick my thumb in that. That's dry as a bone, but it's, it's solid. Light as a feather, but the funny old things. And you can use these for carving. I don't know if you can see where I've, I've took a slither out of it. Just steer up. Use a scalpel. You can chip away, chip away. Don't take too much off at any one time. And... Uh, it should be good. Yeah, so that's Piptoporus betulinus, the razor strop. Uh, this one, I'm not quite sure where it is. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I've only got a few samples of these. Found them growing on a beech tree. Uh, I don't take a lot. Every time, like this one, there were about 10 of these on the tree. I only took one. I don't want to make a mess. and I didn't make a, a big mess when I took it off anyway. Nice clean cut. So, uh you don't, you don't want to ruin the natural environment, do you? So don't take too much if you decide to take any. And uh, yeah, that's the introduction to what bracket fungus actually are and a few facts about them. So what I've actually been doing with them is turning them into something a bit more fancy. I'll start with the smallest. This is Piptoporus betulinus. I've dried them out. Um, like I say, they'll sit like that on the tree. So these are actually upside down. And I've painted them. Looks a little bit like watermelon sort of colour, doesn't it? Painted them on top as well. 
and made a bollet style mushroom for, for the top. I don't know if you can see where I've been carving it out on top. It's not like a, it's proper round. You can see where I've actually been chipping away at it with a scalpel as best I can. So the three pieces, the top, the cap, glued onto the top of the stalk, the stalk separate from the rest of it. So the three pieces there, all carved and all carved when dry and then I've painted them then stuck them all together. So basically that's the smallest, that's the next one up, painted them underneath. They're supposed to be a bolitus lorid formis by the way or thereabouts. Not dead accurate but they've got fat bulbous bodies like that one and red spores underneath so yeah i mean it, the idea is really to put them on the mind expansion center wall a bit like that Spin them on use a little tack and like that sort of sort of thing oh to actually get the stalk of the mushroom to, to stick to the the bracket I've used a tack there, I don't know if you can see it. But get players and I push it in. Don't push in too much, too hard, because you have to be careful because it'll it'll break past a point, then you'll drive it all the way in and knacker everything up. I, I did that a couple of times, found out the hard way. So just be careful, put a bit of effort in but don't follow it through. So that's that. I'm going to size up now. Piptoporus betulinus again. Let's see, it's this one I'm talking about earlier. Uh, these mushrooms are a bit more realistic. I quite like these. So you can see underneath, got like a bluey sort of colour underneath. I don't like the gold colour I've painted them. I just had some amorite, um, yeah, amorite paint hanging about, and uh, never used it for anything. So. I thought I'd just put it on these mushrooms. It wasn't a good idea. I'm going to repaint them, to be honest. But the mushrooms on top, I think, are quite good. Same thing again. I made the cap separate from the stalks. Um, I cut these stalks when they're wet, to be honest. Uh, cut it with scissors. It's a lot easier to cut them with scissors when they're wet. Then I rolled it. And then I bent them into all these different positions to make them look more natural. Then dried it. So it actually, they actually stayed in this position. So uh, yeah, they look quite uh, quite good, don't they? Show you some of the details there. And this is the daddy. Massive one, this. I mean, that, you don't get Piptoporus betulinus much bigger than this. First one I got off the tree, this one. This what's made me started wanting to make things out of them. Because it was that big. Anyway, they're the little troop of mushrooms on the top that I've made there. A lot of time and effort went into these. A lot. I, I bet I'm talking about 10 hours. Making, drying, trial and error, painting. So yeah, these same sort of idea. They can be shelves up on the wall of the Mind Expansion Centre. So that's the Epictoporus betulinus. Um, this is the foam cementarius, the tinder bracket that I've been experimenting with. I normally use these for canvases or for actually sticking bits too, because they're very hard. They're not good for carving, you can't really carve anything out of them. So yeah, I, I add things to these and that's its natural colour. I varnished it with this white varnish. It's got quite a decent effect to it, I think. It looks like a quite a spooky moony sort of colour, doesn't it? So yeah this is the moonscape that i painted by the way i chopped it i chopped off the spore surface then i sanded it down so it's, it's dead straight that is tried to varnish this front edge but because it's a, a porous surface it just kept sucking it up sucking it up and i was using no end and again nowhere so i just thought oh, i'll sod it i'll paint it on anyway and it went all right it didn't suck the paint up too much so um i will decide what i'm going to paint on these by the way is I let the mushroom decide. That sounds a bit daft, but what I mean by that is, there's always a pattern there. Anyway, if if you cut it or there's always something there. So I, I work from that. I mean these patterns here, that line there, these lumps, the swirls, they're already there. So I just I just work with that. 
looked at it, thought, yeah, it looks a little bit like clouds, so spooky moonscape out of it. So that's that one. Slightly more extreme 3D effect on this one. I haven't straightened anything. It's I worked with the shape of the mushroom. I was looking at it and I had it quite a long time to be honest, this mushroom, before I actually um committed to what I was gonna do with it. Like I was saying, I let the mushroom decide. I was looking and I thought, yeah, it does look a little bit like waves. I can imagine waves being there. And now I've painted them on, it does work quite well. I mean that's that's how much it stands out looks. So it's got it's got a good 3D effect to it, hasn't it? The waves are quite stylized. Look at it that way. I'm gonna paint the sky. I haven't finished this yet, by the way. I'm gonna paint some sky here. I'm gonna build a little boat so it looks like the waves are engulfing the, the boat mid-action. So that should be quite interesting when it's done. I started these over a year ago, to be honest. <coughs> but you know what it's like, you start one thing, you go on to another, don't you? I'll get around to finishing them one day. And in a more extreme extreme sense still, it's uh, I've got I've made a face out of this one. It's two mushrooms. Uh, another mushroom growing out of the larger one at, at the top. Not quite sure why that happens. But um, yeah, I, I looked at this and I thought it looks like those aliens, doesn't it? Or for those films where the maths come out. So I went with that, I went with that kind of idea. Its eyes, they're made from um, earth stars. It's a species of mushroom, but I ain't covered them because they're not bracket fungus. But they're sods to paint. I mean, if you can see, it, it's caved in a little bit on top here. And they're that delicate. Every time I put my brush on them, it just wanted to cave it in, so I had to do it very, very delicately. And uh, got there at the end, it was just slow progress, and i will learn as I'll go in. But I know for next time how to do it. Its teeth are actually real teeth. The fossilised shark's teeth. I bought a car boot sale for 10p each, so I bought a pocket full. I just like to buy things like that, just to have hanging about. I put them in my chest of many wonders, and... I'll find a use for him one day. And I did with these. I stuck them on on his face. He looks quite scary, doesn't he? So that's that. That's me little collection of art. Put them all on display here, so. Yeah, we'll put one of these at front. Ta-da. Or there. If you enjoyed this video, um, share it, subscribe, like it, just let me know and I'll make more, there's plenty more I've been doing with mushrooms and art in general so if you did enjoy it let me know and there'll be more to come. This is my first video as well so they're going to get better, I might not have been flowing particularly well in this one but um, you learn as you go don't you, you know what they say about practice. So yeah, let me know if you liked it. Thanks.